And welcome to the Dufferin Board of Trade first coffee chat. I am Liz Skorsky. I'm the chair elect of the Dufferin Board of Trade. We have had a month full of challenge, change, and uncertainty in business. Most businesses are scrambling to adapt their business model. During this time of change, the Dufferin Board of Trade is here for you. We care about our members and your successes. From the beginning, the Canadian and Ontario Chamber of Commerce have been proactive in working with government to help advise on business supports. The Dufferin Board of Trade has developed a very useful web portal. The address is covid19.dufferinbot.ca. Here you will find a summary of the current programs and regulations, resources, and the Dufferin County Essential Businesses. Again, the address to visit is covid19.dufferinbot.ca. So the format today will be two five-minute talks with Kim Reckerman and Edith Tetlock. And then we'll be hearing from Mr. Seaback, who will take questions after his address. I would like to introduce the MP for Dufferin Caledon, Mr. Kyle Seaback. Hi, and thanks for uh, having me on the show to uh, try and give some information out to constituents, uh, certainly business owners, with respect to the various programs that are out there. And um, there's a lot, so I don't think I'm going to be able to go through every single one of them in great detail, but I'm going to try and highlight a few of them right now. And uh, I'm working really hard and my staff is working really hard to get all of this information on my website including hyperlinks on where you can apply for these various loans and other things. So it's a, it's a big undertaking. I'm hopeful to have all that taken care of um, by early next week. So I want to start by talking about the big new announcement, uh, which was, of course, uh, the, way, the new wage subsidy and for business. This is something that we had, uh, had been aggressively pushing the government to do. We did not think that the 10% wage subsidy that was initially announced was going to be enough to help businesses through this, uh, you know, really difficult time. So we now have the new Canada emergency wage subsidy and there's some, uh, so it's going to allow you to um, receive 75% wage subsidy from the government for the first $58,700 of income. It's going to be to a maximum of $847 per week per employee. Uh, businesses must show a 30% decline in revenue and the revenue decline is going to be measured against the same month last year and you have to reapply every month. Now, uh, this is going to apply to uh, businesses, it's going to apply to not-for-profits and it's going to apply to charities as well. Uh, businesses will be able to apply through, for this through uh, a CRA portal. Um, and that's going to be available soon. They're suggesting it should be available in about uh, three weeks uh, with funds being payable in around uh, six weeks. I think there's some challenges with this, um, you know, showing the, the, the revenue decline. Uh, some businesses have up and down cycles normally. Uh, some uh, are new businesses that are just starting up. They're not going to be able to show uh, a revenue decline. So I think there's, there's certainly still some issues dealing with that. Uh, these are things that we're going to try and press the government on. I, I also want to quickly talk about some loans that are available for businesses. And the biggest one right now uh, is going to be the Business Credit Availability Program through BDC. And how that's going to work is it's a small business loan where you can get up to $100,000. It's a completely online application process. And you can postpone uh, any capital uh, payment for the first six months of your loan uh, over five years. Uh, there's also a working capital loan um, that you can apply for uh, to bridge uh, uh, cash flow gaps. And again, that's going to be an online application for that. And finally, uh, through uh, this program, there's uh, purchase order financing. So you're going to be able to cover up to 90% of purchase orders uh, with short-term financing options. And those options are going to be available um, for you to, to go through and look at. And the final one, the, the big one that I see is the new, um, it's a $40,000 loan. It's going to be offered by all major banks and some credit unions. 
it's going to be 100% backed by the government. Uh, this is the incentive for the banks to make sure that anyone who applies, uh, any business that applies, is effectively going to be able to get this loan uh, because the government is backing them. Uh, so uh, these loans will be interest-free until 2022. Uh, and if you uh, repay the balance in full by December 31st, 2022, uh, the government, the, the banks will forgive uh, $10,000 of the loan. So effectively, you only have to repay $30,000. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention is uh, right now there's a tax deferral. Uh, most businesses have taxes to pay in installments. Uh, those are all deferred now until August 31st uh, of this year. And uh, I've been asked this question a number of times. Uh, this does include HST. And the, during this delayed period or this deferral, there will be uh, no interest uh, and no penalties that are going to accrue during that time. So there's a really big uh, suite of uh, business supports that are out there. Uh, as I said at the start, I'm trying to put all of these things onto my website, uh, which is kyleseaback.ca, uh, trying to include hyperlinks where people can click and they automatically get redirected to where they would apply for the various products. One other thing I want to mention, and this is something that uh, myself and my colleagues are pushing the government for. We're at, right now, we're asking the government uh, to refund um, HST payments made by businesses in the last six months. Uh, again, we're trying to get cash back into businesses so that they can pay their rent, uh, keep their employees. Uh, the whole point of the new wage subsidy is so that there'll be less people applying for uh, CERB, which is the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. And that gives individuals who have lost their income $2,000 a month. The, the belief is by offering all these various products to business, they'll be able to keep their employees on. Uh, and therefore there'll be um, less people applying for CERB. That's a really uh, quick summary of all of the, the really big things that are available for uh, business. I, I will say that if uh, businesses uh, uh, are looking for advice or help on how to apply for these things, please, uh, you can email my office, which is uh, the, the general email is kyle.seaback at parl.gc.ca. All that information, uh, those contact numbers are of course on my website uh, and people uh, can also give us a call. We're trying to get back to people within 24 hours. Uh, it is challenging right now. I would say that uh, we are uh, probably receiving, I don't know, 300 uh, plus emails a day, uh, plus phone calls from people who are asking, uh, how do we apply for uh, the Canada Emergency uh, or CERB, the CERB benefit. Um, if I've applied for EI, do I, do, I, uh, do I need to apply for CERB? Lots of questions. We're always happy to answer them. Uh, so my office is not open as uh, most uh, offices. We're trying to work remotely. Uh, so you can leave us messages. We, uh, we check the messages every hour try to return calls within 24 hours. We really want to try and help people through this. We know it's a challenging time, uh, especially for uh, business uh, and certainly for individuals. And I'm, I'm happy, to, uh, happy to answer any questions people might have. Excellent, thank you so much. And that's wonderful information. Um, I have a one couple of questions coming in on the chat. I do have one uh, from DBOT in regards to uh, commercial uh, leases. So I'm just going to read that out to you. Sure. It's a fairly lengthy question. So right. I've had a couple of landlords ask questions about commercial lease payments. With mm -hmm. it being the start of the month, my understanding is that commercial lease payments are processed at no as normal at this time, unless the tenant and landlord can make special arrangements. I believe that they can't, they cannot evict um, and that's relevant only to residential. Um, that being said, many landlords may choose to work with their tenants who may struggle to pay. Have you seen anything more official come out about this topic um, that I could direct landlords to? No, there's, there's no, uh, nothing that's come out that's going to directly support uh, businesses to pay their leases uh, or um, mortgage payments, things like that. 
what I am really asking, and I've had some people email me about this, uh, there are some landlords out there who are basically saying, uh, pay, me my, pay me my rent, pay it right now, I don't care what you're going through. Uh, you know, my message to landlords behaving that way is you need to stop. Uh, this is a real crisis, and if your uh, tenant has lost 90% or 95% of its revenue, uh, how do you expect them to uh, pay your, uh, your lease payment? Uh, businesses are going to get back on their feet. Uh, there's lots of supports coming out right now for business. They're going to get access to capital, whether that's through uh, the BCAP loans through BDC uh, or the, the $40,000 uh, 40, loan, um, the payroll loan that I talked about that the banks are going to um, start offering. Uh, there is cash that's going to come into some of these businesses and you should be working with your tenants to try and find ways to help bridge the gap during this. Uh, there's going to be a gap period now where people are applying for funds from the government or banks uh, and when those funds are delivered. So please work with your tenants. Uh, I don't believe that uh, the pause on evictions is with respect to uh, commercial tenancies. I believe that's only under the, um, for residential tenancies. Okay. So I have um, some other questions. Um, one is in regards to the travel industry. So uh, Tisha Sanders writes, um, great, the government has implemented 75% subsidy for wages. For majority of businesses, this would work well. However, for the travel industry, agencies, tour operators, airlines, et cetera, customer confidence is the main key. Given that this is a worldwide incident, customers will be fearful to travel anywhere. Therefore, although we want to bring our employees back, we need bookings. What is your thoughts and advice for what we can do for customer confidence? Look, that's a tough one, I think, because we don't know when these uh, restrictions are going to be removed. Uh, there's some modeling right now that I've seen through the federal government that some of these restrictions could, uh, you know, last into, uh, you know, June and July. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, then uh, people most likely will not be traveling. Uh, but after that, I think once I think once we have the all clear, it's going to be incumbent on all of us to let people know that uh, businesses need help. Uh, I certainly know that uh, after this is all over, I'm going to need a vacation. I think everyone is going to as well. Vacationing at home when you can't really do much. Uh, even if you're, you know, if you're not working, it's not a vacation. If you're working from home, it's not a vacation either. So uh, I think we should all step up uh, at the end and, and try and travel. I am going to encourage people to travel within Canada. That's going to be my plan uh, because I know the Canadian economy is, is suffering greatly right now. So I don't have a really specific answer for the travel industry right now, unfortunately. Um, they, they certainly can access uh, some of the loans I talked about, in particular the $40,000 payroll loan. Um, uh, will be great that's being offered through banks that should certainly help some uh, travel agencies and, and travel companies as well. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay, so I have another question um, from Karen Murphy Fritz. Did you say that the CERB is uh, applicable to non for profits and charities as well? No, so um, the confusion at CERB is, is for individuals, that's the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. Uh, that's the two thousand dollars per month. If you've had, if you're over the age of fifteen, uh, earned five thousand dollars worth of income in the last twelve months, uh, and have no income, uh, you've lost your job, or your business is closed and you are paying yourself a salary. It's it, income is fairly broadly defined. That's CERB. Uh, what we're talking about is the wage subsidy. Okay. So the wage subsidy that has just been announced, the seventy five percent. Uh, that is going to be available for the charitable and not-for-profit sector. Um, how exactly you're going to determine the drop in revenue, the 30% drop in revenue for charitable organizations and not-for-profits, I'm not sure. Uh, the regulations for both of these uh, programs have not been drafted or they haven't been released. So there's still some details that are going to have to be worked out on all of them. Uh, but they will be able to apply and uh, maybe for charitable and not-for-profits they look at you know donations going down 30 percent uh, because that, that I think is a big driver of revenues for most uh, charities and not-for-profits so uh, I'm hoping that my understanding is that for both of these processes uh, the the CERB benefit for individuals and the wage subsidy for businesses is there's going to be a really 
um, liberal approach to uh, people, how you can qualify uh, with the intent that people are going to act honestly. Uh, so I also want to stress this. Uh, the, the Prime Minister has been very clear on this, uh, as has uh, most business organizations. Um, people should be honest in their applications because we don't have the time to go in detail to double check that everyone's being honest with their applications because we just want to get the money out to people quickly. So please be honest in your dealings uh, when you apply for these benefits. And uh, the Prime Minister is pretty clear. If you're a business and you're applying for any of these products and uh, you get them and you're being dishonest, there will be consequences. And so I want to, you know, reinforce that as well. We should really all be uh, acting honorably during this time. Okay, great. I have um, a question from Melissa Vinden. Um, for small business owners that are paid by dividends instead of salaries, will the CERB and other incentives take into consideration the dividend being the same as salary? I don't have an answer to that one either. I, my understand, again, uh, to qualify for CERB, uh, you're going to have to have no income or, you know, no dividends, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that makes it a little more complicated, I think, with dividends. It's easier when you have lost your job and you have your record of employment. Uh, that's pretty clear. You have no income. I do believe they're going to take a very broad approach to defining income, which would include things like, uh, like dividends, et cetera. Um, again, I think uh, the CERB benefit is going to be uh, taxable, uh, I believe. Again, the, there's a little bit of conflicting information. Uh, the the uh, and I might get this wrong, but I think the minister said it's it's not taxable, but then the government put it a release and said it will be taxable. So um, I think it's going to be taxable. Uh, so if um, if you uh, if you had income and you applied for CERB and were dishonest, uh, you're going to be taxed. And depending on what the regulations that come in, uh, there might be some, uh, some punishment for people who are claiming these benefits when they're not entitled to it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I have another question from Diane Smith. Um, mm -hmm. She says, during the recession in 2008, I opened a business and the home renovation tax credit kickstarted my business. I know mm -hmm. it's early stages right now, but are there any conversations as to stimulus programs to get the economy moving again once we're able to get back to work? Right now, there's not. And I think there, I think there obviously will be when we get to that point. Right now, the, the real urgency is to try and get money into people's hands so they can pay their rent, so they can pay their mortgage, uh, buy groceries and things like that. That's the, the real rush right now. Uh, whether, uh, look, I love the home renovation tax credit, both from a, a policy perspective and from the fact that I used it to renovate my own home. Uh, I hope that there's going to be creative solutions like that. I know that we will be pushing for incentives like that. Well, in the last campaign, we campaigned on a green renovation uh, home tax credit. So maybe the government will uh, take a page from our campaign platform and implement that. I think it'd be a great one. Uh, it would, uh, lower greenhouse gas emissions by making homes more efficient and also kickstart the economy. Perfect, thank you. Um, and that, there's another question from Gord Gallagher and this one maybe uh, we've already addressed. I think you did. Uh, for individuals who'd been laid off from positions with a charity or nonprofit or municipal agency, would those have been individuals apply for the CERB? And I th yeah. think they would, okay. Yes, absolutely. The other thing I wanna mention is that anyone uh, who has currently applied for EI, uh, that application is going to be automatically transferred to a new to the CERB uh, process. Um, okay, so it's transferred. So I have lots of questions on that. Uh, my fear is that uh, this is a massive new program and undertaking by the government. They have many of their employees working remotely uh, or just being told to stay home, so they're understaffed. So I am concerned about the implementation of people's EI files being transferred over to CERB. Um, so I've been recommending that people, uh, if you've got your EI application in and you haven't heard anything, uh, my understanding is the CERB uh, application is gonna be very simple. Uh, you can do it through your My CRA account. I've been putting this information out through social media. If you don't have a My CRA account, uh, please go and set one up. It is going to really speed the process, especially if you have automatic deposit. 
uh, in your bank set up through your my CRA because then the money will go directly uh, into your bank account. So even if you've applied for EI, I don't think there's any problem if you uh, apply for CERB just out of an abundance of caution. And that's what I've been telling people to do. Awesome. And, and just for clarification, the money that you would receive would not be repayable then? No, the CERB is, is not a, a repayable benefit. Uh, whether it's going to be taxable or not, I, I think it's going to be. Uh, it certainly makes sense. Um, but no, not repayable. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any comments from anybody? Okay, that is great. Um, I don't see anything new on the chat, but I really, really appreciate your time. Oh, here's one that just came in. Um, okay, so the question is, can university students who lost their summer jobs, would they be able to apply for CERB as long as they made $5,000 in the prior year? Yes. So anyone who had, so this is a big, this is a really tough one and I'm getting lots of emails about this. Uh, some university students who are graduating uh, didn't earn income last year. They have no, no employment and really no prospects of employment right now. Uh, they are not eligible for CERB. That you have to have earned income. I think it's a big gap. Uh, we're pushing the government to try and make some allowances. They are saying there's more student loans available, et cetera, et cetera, but that doesn't help someone who's recently graduated. But uh, if you earned $5,000 in the last 12 months, uh, you are over the age of 15, whether you're in school or not, and you are not able to be employed right now, you can apply for CERB. Okay, so your best, so the, here's a tough one. Um, you're a solopreneur, you've been in business for a while, so you have a history of income, mm -hmm. but you're not able to pay yourself at this time. What is mm -hmm. the best thing to apply for? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, so uh, if you're a small business, uh, you would need a payroll of $50,000 to apply for the $40,000 loan that I talked about. Um, so I don't know if that person uh, had a payroll of uh, $50,000, they could apply for the $40,000 loan. Uh, that's possible. If they have absolutely no income at all right now, uh, and they were paying themselves uh, remuneration of over $5,000 the last 12 months, they could apply for CERB. Uh, whether you can apply for both, uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. And again, the regulations for both of these benefits have not been released. And as, as maybe some people don't know, but policy announcements are great, uh, but uh, the devil's always in the details and that is in the regulations. So when the regulations are released, uh, we'll have better answers to all these questions. Okay, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I have one more question here. Uh, clarification, should we invite, advise our employees to sign on to EI even if we plan to look at the wage subsidy once it's in place? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. So as, as it's been drafted right now, it's, it's if you've... Uh, March 15th is basically where you can go back to if you've been laid off. Um, so I think that uh, people have lost income by being laid off. Uh, so they should apply for CERB. Uh, if they are rehired by the business getting one of these various products, the wage subsidy, uh, the, um, the $40,000 loan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that then they will have an obligation to advise uh, the government that they're now re-employed uh, and therefore should not continue to receive CERB. That's, okay. that's how I would handle it. Okay, that's great. Any other questions for Kyle? We'll just wait a second. And I just, just want to quickly say to business, and I'm looking at some of the questions here. Uh, right now, if uh, business owners, if you're, if you're laying people off right now, uh, I would recommend that you don't tell your employees to apply for EI. Uh, I would wait until the new portal opens to apply for CERB on April the 6th. Uh, EI is very, very badly backlogged right now. Um, you know, they're getting, I think they got a million applications last week and the most they've ever gotten before that was 180,000 uh, during the last uh, big recession in 2009. So the much better plan for your employees would be to wait. I'm just looking over at my calendar. 
uh, what is that going to be? April 6th is going to be Monday, I believe. So uh, that portal is supposed to be up. It's uh, to make that application. And my understanding is they're going to try and get those benefits out within 10 days. Awesome. That's really good information. Excellent. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other questions here. Um, I want to thank you so much, Kyle and Kim Reckerman and Edith Tetlock. We so appreciate your time. It's great. Um, I do encourage people to go and visit the uh, COVID-19 portal from DBOT uh, that we've built for you. And then again, we'll also get Kyle's website when it's already on that portal for you. So it's all in one spot. Uh, please reach out to the Dufferin Board of Trade with any questions or concerns uh, for support information. And I thank you all and wish you a very productive uh, Friday. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for having me on. Great job, everyone. Okay. Have a great day.